Hey, Shalom. We'd like to give all praises, glory, and honors to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakat Kadash. We'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, salutations, and blessings to the elect who firmly believe on Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. Now, I'm with the brother Shalama. You know what I'm saying? We was pretty much building, you know what I'm saying? And pretty much meditating, you know, as far as getting into a lesson, you know, and, um, you know, something pretty much sparked as far as, you know, fear, you know, and, and the title of this lesson is going to be, you only fear when you have something to lose, you know, and, um, when it comes, when it comes to being prophets, you know, men of the Lord serving you, how by Shimei, I was shy, you know, we understand that this truth comes before anything, any and everything, you know, and we, we deal with the measure that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai gives us, you know, within this terrain, you know, as far as dealing and maneuvering within the society, you know, and, and sometimes the Lord, you know, puts us through tribulations so we don't get too comfortable in this society, you know, so we, we, we have to keep an edge about ourselves, you know what I'm saying, because the more edge that you have, you know, the, the, the less fear you're also going to have, you know. So, like I said, the title of this lesson is going to be You Only Fear When You Have Something to Lose, you know? So the first scripture I got here is the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 12, verse 7. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. You know, and the dragon is talking about this beast system. You know, Edom, Edom NATO in the EU, right? And it says, and it's talking about Michael, the arch, archangel, and the holy angels that's going to come with Yahweh Shai in the, uh, on his second return. Verse 8, and it says, and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Whose place? These Edomites. You know, because heaven is in symbolization of rulership, metaphorically speaking. You know, so when the Lord, when the Heavenly Father sends his son down, Yahweh Shai, he, he, he sent him down for the taking. What is the Lord going to take? The Lord's going to take what is destined to be his, the kingdom, right? So it says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. You know, and that's one, um, you know, when you watch that movie, Usual Suspects, you know, one, one, one quote that really sticks out within that whole movie was that the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled was con convincing the world that he didn't exist. You know, and that's these Edomites. You know, they 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 made you to believe that the devil was some uh, bloody red man with uh, with a tail, horns, and a pitchfork. You know, that lived underworld. You know, and didn't actually live on planet Earth. You know, not knowing that he he comes with a suit and tie and a briefcase, speaking eloquently, shaven. You know, to deceive the masses of the people. Right. And it says, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power. So that shows that shows us that there has to, something has to come to an end for something else to prosper and flourish. You know, two kings can't rule at once, man. You know, not like them peons, I believe it was ISUPK. Was saying how we got to set up our kingdom alongside Edom, that'll make this scripture null and void, man. So that goes to show that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And that also furthermore proves the scripture when you come back and serve the Lord, you'll able you'll be able to discern him that serveth the most high and him that serveth them not, based on the content that's being spoken on. Right? Um, reading on, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our power. And the power of his anointed For the accuser of our brethren Is cast down That's essentially what the word devil means Is accuser You know because this devil pulls false accusations Upon us all, all the days of his life You know And not only that he, 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 he sets up Stumbling blocks for us to fall So he can point the finger at us To blame to the heavenly father So he can continue ruling You know that's a that's a that, that's a that's a way in the motive that this devil operates. And, that, and in general, that's that's just the nature of a devil, which, uh, yeah. which, which makes it more true of what the scriptures say that he is, 
thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's, right. That's all ultimate examples of him being the devil and him doing the work of spiritual demon Satan on the left hand side. That's right. And it says, For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. You know, and that's the point. You know, you only fear when you got something to lose. You know, and that's why the true men of the Lord, essentially, we don't love our lives. We, we, we struggle. <laughs> you know, the Lord, the Lord blesses with little trinkets here and there, you know, just to create a balance because there's not a false balance with the Heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? But we, we have the understanding that we're not going to put the world before this ministry. We're not going to put the world or anybody else's life before our life. You know what I'm saying? And, or and vice versa, because we know we, we're not going to even, well, well, let me say this truth. We're not going to put anything of this world before the truth, not even our own lives. That's what I meant to say. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's, it's actually going to take death. Matter of fact, I don't know if you got a scripture, but let me bring this. Yeah, yeah, after you get the scripture, you can grab, uh, uh, what is it, Hebrews or 12, and I believe like 11. Go. But, you know, in general, too, because like, like how you said, like, we don't, we don't, really love our lives, you know what I'm saying? Ultimately, we hate our lives because this ain't life for us. Right. This is life for Esau. He's within his kingdom and we within our hell. So, knowing those basic principles and, and that's well established when we come into this truth, you know what I'm saying? Of, that we came over here to, to serve our punishment, to serve slavery, so on and so forth. It should be nothing for people to give up their lives to the Lord within this present time frame. Right. You know what I'm saying? But people think that they can have it now and they can still enter into the kingdom based off of their wicked deeds when the Lord don't work like that, man. You know, it's the Lord's way or it's no way. It's no uh, middle middle role or you trying to do what you want to do and still think you're going to get a, a, a taste of the kingdom. Nah, you're going to have to taste death for your ill ways and what you're trying to live, you know, uh, off of the land and off of Esau, man. Right. And um, man, what's, the t what's the title again? Sorry. You only fear when you got something to lose. Yeah, you only fear when you got something to lose and, and that's why they... You know, they have the common slogan, uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's right. You know, because people that have so much within the society, they don't want to lose it all. Case in point, with Yahweh Shah and the rich man, and Yahweh Shah told him what he needed to do to enter into the kingdom, okay. and he didn't want to give up all that his father had built. Because he looked at that as great treasures, not knowing that the Heavenly Father got treasures laid up that's way greater than that, man. Exactly. And the, and the treasures that's on heaven can't touch that. On this side of heaven, you know, the earth can't touch that, man. That's right. It's beautiful. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Hey, and, and what's some of the things in which we're going to suffer? The scriptures tell us clearly what in, in, in Luke, Luke 21, I believe, what that our, our parents is going to give us up, our f different family members, you know yeah. what I'm saying, brothers, whoever, you know what I'm saying? So we know that's a that's a part of the suffering. Yeah. We know that we're going to suffer uh, underneath martial law because we're still going to be suffering as well, but we're going to be much better off in two thirds, especially because our mindset is more intact as to we knowing what's going on and we know that this is not for us. Absolutely. We know that this is for two thirds and the destruction of the society ultimately, yeah. you know? So those are some of the things we gotta suffer. We might have to suffer, you know, family members and friends getting getting uh, killed right in front of us. We might have to suffer going hungry for a day or two, but then the Lord provides some food for us, mm. different things like that. We know the things in which we have to suffer. So that makes it that much more easier when those Psalms come. That's right, absolutely. It says, and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And, and that's the point, too, that endurance, you know, and the more, you know, it's like the longer we've been in truth, the more you can really see it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like how you really got to pace yourself because it's about that endurance. That's right. You know, you always do want to be on fire and different things like that. But then, you know, it's like, okay, well, let me, you know, I got this, I got this, you know what I'm saying? Let me take my time with it a little bit let me pace myself a little more mm -hmm. now i can see things a lot clearer yeah. you know you begin to gain more knowledge wisdom and understanding within this truth and you begin to see things you know that much more better you know mm -hmm. in, in the spirit and the lord is you know calming your spirit down so to, to keep you more balanced right. with things you know what i'm saying because you know when we first enter into the truth you know a lot of brothers especially me personally myself be over righteous with a lot of things but then the lord comes give you the realization like yo pace yourself 
look at this, there's so much to grasp within this truth, the Lord has to slow you down for you to be able to see the full picture clearly. Because right. a lot of times you might think you got the full picture, but until you feel certain aspects and when they really hit you, yeah. you fully don't know and don't understand. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That. And that's why the scriptures say the race is not given to the swift. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's about patience. You know, with patience possessing your souls. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what this truth is about. It's about a marathon. You know, you're not going to be able to endure a marathon if you find yourself sprinting. You know what I'm saying? You're going to gas out. You're going to lose air. Yeah. You know, the the, the, the the number one thing that you want to do when, when, when playing sports, you know, when... um. If you got to take a test, you know, hell, if you're having sex with your woman, if you want to last long, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's a little tip for brothers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you got to be able to breathe, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's certain techniques you, you have to breathe, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Even when you do, uh, when you when you exercise and you're working out, you know what I'm saying? At the end of that workout, you know, to calm down, you got to what? Breathe in, breathe out, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all about what? Patience at the end of the day. Take, take, taking your time, you know, because that, that's the only way you're going to be able to endure, you know, th th this truth. You got a lot of people that fell off and stopped teaching because they didn't know how to endure. They wasn't balanced out. They didn't know how to take a, they, they didn't They didn't exercise their breathing techniques, man. Mm -hmm. You know, huh. they, they, they ate up all the honey. And when the times got bitter, they vomited it all up, man. Yeah. You know, totally negating. The, the, the spiritual benefits within that tribulation or hell that the heavenly father put them through. Yeah, and, and the point, like how you said, they, they forgot to breathe and, you know, uh, the Lord puts the breath in us. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yep. like you said, that, that goes right ahead. Like how you just said, they miss certain spiritual aspects uh, within this truth mm -hmm. because they got more carnal minded. Man. Exactly. As, long as, you stay, as long as you stay spiritual at the end of the day, you always going to be in the right spirit if you keep things spiritual first and foremost before you put your feelings or emotions or anything that's carnal. Man. Yep. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 11. It says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceful fruit of righteousness mm -hmm. unto them which are exercised thereby. Right, and, and that's the point of things, that the Lord is putting us through these things so that we can feel the grievousness. And the, the scriptures also say, too, in um, Sirach, um, in the moments of prosperity, there's forgetfulness of affliction. Yep. In the moments of affliction, there's forgetfulness of prosperity. Absolutely. So the Lord always got to have that fine balance and still having us going through the motions of the tribulations because they are there to prepare us for, you know, the ultimate, uh, the, the final battle at the end, which is going to be, you know, uh, uh, the hour of temptation, us facing the mark of the beast, the yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's ultimately what is it boil, what is going to boil down to the hour of temptation. You know, the hour of temptation. That's going to be the fi uh, the final exam. You know, and, and we have to be built up. You know what I'm saying? The only way for us to be built up is for us going through things. And if you fold in through quizzes and tests, you know, or even the midterm, how you expect to pass the final exam? You know, you're not going to be able to pass the. You're not going to even pass the grade if you've been failing quizzes and tests yeah. and the midterm. You know. You're not gonna pass. You, you're not gonna move on to the next grade, man. The same way with this truth, the Lord puts us through situations. The Lord puts us through battles to have less love of this world. Exactly. <laughs> you know, to to have less love of this world. Perfect. You know, and, I, and that's why I said too, like uh, unto them that are exercised thereby. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm yep. It's like you you got to keep going through it. You got to keep going through it. You're gonna you're gonna lose some of the battles, but you always want to make sure that your wins outweigh your losses. Man. Exactly. And that's how you stay on top of things, man. You yeah. Know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, um, verse twelve. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and feeble and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for the feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, and, um, let me try to get this other scripture out of the Apocrypha, you know, because fear is where individuals go wrong, man. And essentially, when you fear, you know, you betraying the help that the Heavenly Father's given us, you know. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 12. And it reads, for fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succorers, which reason offereth, you know. So if you find yourself fearing, guess what? You betraying the, the the help that the heavenly father's offering, 
You know, you 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 only got two options. You're going to fear man or you're going to fear the heavenly father. You know, and, it, and it's betrayal when you choose to fear man over the heavenly father. When the heavenly father is the one who controls and created that man who you so-called fearing. Mm -hmm. You know, not only that, why would you fear somebody who fears the Lord? Why would you fear the individual who fears your power? Yeah. You know, the scriptures say, for they were afraid, yet there's fight. Yeah. But what did it say first? He was afraid. Yeah. You know? But that's and, and the only reason why they're fighting is because the Lord is hardened in their hearts. The Lord wants to fight. Mm -hmm. The Lord's going to put it in their spirit to fight. You know? And it says, and the expectation from within being less. As a matter of fact, you can bring it back real quick. Come on. It says, for fear is nothing else but a betraying of the sufferers which reason offereth. Yeah, and uh, and the, the word support, and that, that literally means like the help. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The help that the Lord is providing, and it said what that reason offereth. Mm -hmm. So what? The the Lord is is offering us help through the reasonings that we have within our mind, the, the rationale that we're supposed to have within our mind. Yep. Because your mind is always supposed to be steady and focused upon the Lord. Yeah. And, and, and knowing that the Lord, yo, yo, the Lord always been here for all the brothers, all our, our ancestors, and I'm saying uh, the people that was here before us to pave the way, you know, our forefathers. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why wouldn't he be there for us now? Right. So the Lord is like, knowing all of this and knowing the history, you know what I'm saying? How the scriptures uh, speak on, um, uh, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, no breaking bread. That's right. No different examples of, of Paul, Yahweh Shah, Jeremiah, all the great men that adored. The Lord is like, yo, I gave you all these examples. You know, I've been helping you throughout your personal journey, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the way, all the way. And I've been there for you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And now you going to doubt me? <laughs> right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's why it's like a heavy portrayal. Exactly. It's like I gave you more than enough examples. You see the signs. And so why would you still doubt at this point? Man? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> it says, and the expectation from within being less count if the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. You know, so here it is, you're choosing, you know, here it is, you're, you're, the, the, expectation to, the expectation from within, you know, which is your faith, you know, being less count of the ignorance more than the call which brings the torment. So here it is, you choosing to fear this devil, you know what I'm saying, or what he can do to you, as opposed to the torment that the Heavenly Father can ultimately bring to you. Because what's that torment that the Heavenly Father is bringing? Thermonuclear destruction, man. You know, thermonuclear destruction, you know? So, so count the cost, man. Count the cost on which way you want to suffer, you know, because you got to suffer either way, you know. I'd rather suffer by man than the hands of the Heavenly Father, you know. And hell, the Lord could put it upon your spirit to where you suffer for a period of time, you know what I'm saying? He grants you spiritual powers, you know, because the Lord said he was going to lift up a standard. Matter of fact, let me grab that right quick. <coughs> and, um, and, uh, damn, I keep forgetting the name of the title and shit. Uh, oh, um, you only fear when you got something to lose? Yeah, so it's like, being that we're on, we're on the short end of the stick already, it's like, it's like, what really do you have to lose within a society that wasn't built for you any goddamn way? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, hey, it's the matter of fact, the Martin Lawrence movie, that was perfect. Nothing to lose. Yeah, nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Yeah. We really don't have nothing to lose. Yeah. It's nothing for us to gain within the society, yeah. and we have nothing to lose on, on both ends. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Jake make things that much more harder for themselves when they cover after the things that is Esau's, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is at the end of the day. You know, just how, you know, we just came from the spot and they talk about worrying about what other people think and worry about other people's opinions and feelings and stuff. And right. that's what it's all based upon, man. Yep. Once you let all of that shit go, you can easily let all of the cares of the, of the world go and different things like that. When you, when you be more selfish and you be more towards the Lord, man, yeah. you know? Oh, they got to, in layman terms, they got a term in the world called get rich or die trying. Yeah. Why, 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 why is that term there, get rich or die trying? Because that individual has nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. He's willing to die in order to get rich. Yeah. And we're willing to die in order to receive the kingdom. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to inherit spiritual riches, you know? To where no one's going to cry no more in the kingdom. We're not going to suffer ailments. We're not going to have diseases. 
Our woman's not going to buck up at us. Our woman's no longer going to cheat on this. Your, your, your kids aren't going to talk back. Your kids ain't going to turn into a demon. That's the world we yearning for. That's the world we looking upon. You know, and if we have to be a martyr for your help by Shemi outside in order to receive it, so be it. You know, you got individuals out there that ain't scared to rob no bank. <laughs> you know, because they got they already at the bottom. How much more can they suffer? Mm -hmm. You know. But um, this Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. You know, and that flood is talking about those martial law troopers, man. You know, so you're going to have the, the Lord got certain men out here already predestined that's going to receive that power from on high, you know, and to where the the enemy is not going to be able to penetrate nor prevail over them, you know, and the scriptures tell us, and then shall you know that ye are my chosen, you know, because the Lord is going to be doing miraculous things. For his prophets, you know, and his men that's been serving him day and night, you know. And we and we at the end of Esau's kingdom, you know. So we at the point now where the Lord said, "What in, in lamentations that the cup shall pass into thee, O Edom, the the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion." Come. You know what I'm saying? So we we on the rise, man. So it's so, like that. That's it. Is is nothing to lose within the society? Why? Because we already on the rise in the spirit. Yeah. You want to rise in the spirit, and the Lord is about to soon make it all manifest within the physical form, man. And that's it, man. That's it. Got any closing scriptures? Um, nah, that was good. Hey, so with that, you know, we'd like to give all praises, glory, and honors to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do well. Peace, salutations, and blessings to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.